Hi, I am Kevin Thomas, and welcome to the At Home Film Festival. Thanksgiving weekend is coming to an end, and you're probably happy, maybe most of you, to say goodbye to your friends and family and have your time to yourself and relax in your home. But you're going to miss a lot of these dishes, aren't you? The great food you had over the holidays, all this wonderful, tasty delights that you now gone. Well, that's okay. I decided to let the party continue. I have found seven movies that take place over dinner so we together can enjoy more hearty meals but without the crowd in our house. So let's take a look and see what great foods we have and what movies they are in. So let's go now. Our first movie is a doozy. Guess who's coming to dinner? 1967, you could find this on Stars and Stream Picks, and actually, I bought it for $4.99 on Amazon Prime. But this movie was nominated for tons of Oscars, but it only won one, Best Actress Katherine Hepburn, which was a great one. Um, three other cast members were nominated, except for Cindy Poitier. I don't want to say it was Oscar so white back then, even though they were, but he was in three great movies that year, so I'm sure his votes were split. But it doesn't matter. He gives a great performance. Oh, and we also have one from Spencer Tracy, his last performance. There's a scene where Katherine Hepburn really cries in this movie, and she's actually crying because she was so close to Spencer Tracy, and his health was ailing, and she knew it wasn't long. But this movie plays an upper scale white couple whose daughter is about to marry someone black. So he's being brought home for dinner with his family and they have to deal with racism and their own acceptance. People are different. In fact, they are put in their place many times. And even Sidney puts his own family in his place because he is a doctor and he demands respect from even his own family. Like many Stanley Kramer movies, this is a great character study. He gets out great performances. I always levitate towards Stanley Kramer movies because the cast is always amazing, and I know a lot of that has to do with his direction. A movie not to be missed. It's a great dinner party as well. So guess who's coming to dinner? You and me. Yeah, let's go. Then we have The Big Night on Canopy and Pluto. This movie is one, when you go to see a food movie, do not go hungry because you will be wanting to reach into that screen and get that food. It takes place about two brothers, I think it was in New Jersey, and they open an authentic, real Italian restaurant, but the trouble is there's so many chains nearby that they're struggling with their business with authentic, real Italian food where people want the Americanized version. They cannot understand why they're not selling out every day and having empty tables, but they decide to have some big party, hopefully not the swan song of the restaurant, but it possibly could be, but they're trying to get themselves on the map and they make this dish in the movie. I'm just salivated thinking about timpano, which when I saw this being made, I actually had to ask my friend Massimo to make it for me for my birthday one year and he did. He said there's so many ingredients. It's like this big pie of pasta. Oh, it's so good. And what a cast, by the way, as you see them all here. We've got Stanley Tucci, we have Tony Shalhoub, we have Alice and Janney, we have Isabella Rossellini. Love, 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 love this movie. And watch it with Timpano made for you. Oh, so good. So good. In fact, I showed the Timpano at the opening credits, so let's take a look. There it is. Oh my God. That's, oh, that's my Timpano. Look at that. Oh, luscious. Delicious. Lauren, oh, 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 salivate, salivate, oh. <laughs> Maybe because it's the holidays, but August Osage County can be found everywhere. It's on Netflix, it's on Showtime, it's on Paramount Plus. Oh, based upon a great, great play, it brings a family together over death and illness, and it has two oscar nominated performances in it before Meryl Streep and Julia Roberts. They're both terrific. The whole cast is really good in this. I don't want to say it's a great movie because it's sort of August Osage County life. The play was longer and the play had more depth and details. The movie skims over a few things, but I guess they don't expect a movie audience to sit for three hours watching a movie of something that is not in, of epic proportions like a Titanic or Ten Commandments. But in any event, it's a really good family story and it brings people together. 
Not always so functional, though. I will tell you that. That dinner scene really, really brings out the secrets, which probably a lot of ours did as well, right? <laughs> the Last Supper is a little harder to find. It's on Tubi, and it's sort of an underground classic from decades ago. It's about a group of college friends that get together for nice dinners, and one of their dinner parties, someone accidentally dies at their hand. So what they decide to do from now on is invite people over as a guest and actually kill the ones that really shouldn't be in this world. It's them making a judgment about people, but they're killing people that are bigots, anti-gay, anti-abortion. They find out more about the person and then they serve them a certain wine. They give the good wine to people that can live and the bad wine to the people that shouldn't. And a lot of people shouldn't in this world. Maybe we should bring this tradition back. Just kidding! But anyway, I made an interesting plot for a movie. It's got quite an all-star cast, as you can see here. A lot of them were unknown then. Um, maybe an early Cameron Diaz film, and Annabeth Gish. We saw Jason Alexander, and we saw oh, so many people. I, I, I'm just going to keep listening. You know who they are. There they are. Anyway, find it on Tubi. You won't be sorry. And if you are, you could be drinking the wrong wine. <laughs> I almost did not include Dinner for Schmucks, which you could find on Stars. Um, I like the cast. It's Paul Rudd and Steve Carell there. But I found it to be super mean-spirited. And although it's an American version of a foreign film, the other film was also mean-spirited. It's sort of about how to get ahead in business. And the person who gets ahead is one who brings the worst house guest to a dinner party. So they have to bring odd people. Um, I find them quirky, not odd. Um, just people that they call losers. So the whole point of this dinner party is who has the biggest loser. So that part is mean spirited. But you know what? I After watching this movie thinking, that was awful. I thought about it a lot and I watched it again and I laugh at it and I feel bad laughing at it because sometimes I feel laughing at people. But I don't want anyone to make fun of me, but still, the cast uplifts the materials, and Steve Carell, who's supposed to be the big loser in this, is actually quite appealing, and he makes you open your heart to him, and I find that to be a great feat, considering the character was written as someone that we all should be annoyed by. So if you want to have a schmuck for dinner, invite me and this movie. Thanks. Now, let's go to classics. Let's end on classical notes. The next two movies are based upon plays by George S. Kaufman, who was one of the wittiest writers that ever graced the theater. Dinner at Eight, which you could find on a not very popular streaming channel, Retro Reels, is also often on TCM. But this is about a movie where they're throwing a dinner party at eight. <laughs> okay, that's not news breaking. But it shows the different class levels and the struggle that some people have. But it's more of a comedy, although it's very dramatic and it's got an all-star cast. But, I mean, you see some people are having health issues. Some people are having money issues. And then when you get down to it, there's silliness about it. Like Billy Burke, who's hosting the dinner party, is so upset having the worst day of her life because she's short one man and her butler... Um, her two of her house people, one of, they got in a fight, one of them went to the hospital, one of them went to jail, and the band's playing too loud over dinner. So these are her issues in life. So this is such a Karen moment, I think. But it also brings who I love, Jean Harlow, who did not have a long enough career. She is super funny in everything she does. I think she's underrated as an actress because she was so beautiful. But she is so wonderful in this. And every time this comes on TV, I watch it. I don't always watch it at eight, but I usually watch it with dinner. Our other classic is The Man Who Came to Dinner, which is on HBO right now. And this is a Betty Davis movie, but it's really not her movie. It's Monty Woolley's, who played it on Broadway. He should have been up for an Oscar. He plays an uppity, snooty critic who goes to stay at a family's house when he's in their town doing a lecture, and he slips and falls, so he ends up in a wheelchair, and he makes everybody in the house his servant. He completely takes over. He runs the house like it's his own, like everybody works for him. He's very, very irritable. And yet everybody goes along. There's a bunch of sub stories about people falling in love and dating and everything, but it all is brought together by the great performance of Monty Woolley. 
I really, really enjoy this movie, and I hope you do too. HBO. Well, that's our show of the week. Hopefully you enjoyed. Please share mm -hmm. and subscribe. Tell others to share and subscribe. I am leaving with, there's so many other good food movies I couldn't do, but I have talked about this one before, Soul Food. So please find this on your streaming channels now because it's a really terrific film. There's so many other good f food movies, but you know, I couldn't go on forever and ever, but maybe I'll come back. Anyway, I'm Real Kev, Kevin Thomas. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Comment below. What food movie did you love on this list or one that I really missed and you're mad at me? Let me know. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>